All right, welcome to another quick market recap. So there are some interesting new developments in the charts since our last video. As speculated in my previous video, Bitcoin did face an immense challenge when it reached this resistance zone. Not only did it not manage to establish a higher high, it didn't even manage to reach the descending resistance line over here. It is also close to confirming a quite clean looking expanded flat continuation pattern as discussed in our previous video. However, we're not there yet. Things are not all bad though, and we're still at a point where the bulls can and actually have put up a good fight in order to turn things around. For example, the bulls pulled off a decent victory in the recent days. I was observing the potential creation of a head and shoulders pattern on the daily time frame. You know I like comparing this macro corrective move to the one that lasted between 2019 and 2020 and culminated with the COVID capitulation. Therefore, even this potential head and shoulders pattern looked eerily familiar. However, even though the bulls managed to close below the neckline, the candle doing this left a long wick to the downside, which confirmed to me that this was a potential trap. Furthermore, the bears did not manage to hold the neckline and create a bearish retest from the underside. Sure enough, a sizable short squeeze followed and the head and shoulders pattern was invalidated. This shows the importance of waiting for confirmation as stressed many times in my market updates. I'm pretty glad I didn't take the trade. So where are we right now? Well, we're currently stuck in this smaller resistance area of certain previous tops and bottoms again. Nothing particularly exciting so far, just stuck in limbo again. However, my gut feeling is telling me that we are close to a decision point. Before moving on to our power line indicators, what are some other TA aspects that we can currently observe over here? Well, it's always a good idea to start with the basics and establish our main support and resistance lines in the area. First, we have the neckline of the failed head and shoulders. The bulls really want to keep the price above this line if they intend to prove that their momentum is still strong. If that line were to fail, the support area that really needs to be held at all costs is this ascending support line drawn from the previous bottoms. We have a similarly sloped line on the top which would likely act as a resistance line if we were to go back up there again. Together, these two lines form a rising wedge pattern, which is typically bearish. However, both the tops and bottoms only have two touch points each as of right now, so keep that in mind. Here is another example of a rising wedge pattern from Bitcoin's previous market cycle. Then we have the macro support and resistance lines forming our descending broadening wedge, which is typically bullish. Now let's get to our other power line indicators. As you can see, Bitcoin is still finding support on our blue power law trend deviation line, but it hasn't yet really produced a very powerful bounce. There are even more similarities between the current correction and the COVID crash if you look at the interaction with the blue power law trend deviation line over here. So even if we were to get a larger bounce over here, you don't want it to fail like this bounce. Now to the Bitcoin power lock clock. The current Bitcoin time is 8.19, so only 41 minutes left until 9 o'clock. Notice how long we have stayed above the average represented by the red line, while in previous cycles we have typically been well below this line at similar points. We have been slowly trending toward it, though, so this correction over the last 7 months or so has simply been balancing out the previous price action. Good news is that this downtrend should end within a couple of months or so, if not sooner. The detrended oscillator relative to trend is still in muddy territory, somewhere between yellow and green, perfectly illustrating the indecisive nature of the current price level. Now to the local Hearst exponent. It has finally turned green, which is actually a bullish sign. However, this is a bit of a mixed bag because it does sometimes catch bottoms perfectly, and at other times it has quite a uh, delay, as you can see. This is to be expected though, because this is a lagging indicator and we need some confluence from some other indicators before we can actually become fully bullish again. 
So, as mentioned before, I'm finding quite many similarities between the current mini-bubble and the COVID mini-bubble. This is where I want to talk about the topic of today, though, which is all about the potential dangers of excessive pattern recognition. As humans, we are hardwired to, by nature to recognize patterns, sometimes even in places where none exist. This ability is essential to our survival, and it's often better to overanalyze than to underanalyze. However, this tendency can be extremely detrimental in certain areas of life, particularly when it comes to technical analysis. Fractal patterns are especially popular. Let me show you an example. So look at this bear market from 2013 and 2014 and compare it to this one from 2018 all the way to March of 2020 with the COVID crash. So, can you notice any similarities over here? Let me draw something here to show what I mean. So we have this downtrend and a larger uptrend and then a downtrend again, putting in a lower low. And then if you draw the same thing over here, it would look something like this. And if you were to project it further, it should have gone down much more before reversing again. Can you see the similarities? Let me draw a bars pattern over here. So let's take it from the top to the bottom. We have to do some fitting over here. Mm -hmm. And let's fit these tops over here to show you what I mean. The proportions are not exactly the same as you can see this one higher over here, but you can see what I mean. If you zoom in, you can actually see even with the peaks, you can find many similarities between the two patterns. You, if you went full conspiracy mode, you could see like uh, that there are very many similarities between individual tiny little tops even and bottoms. But what happened over here? As you can see, Bitcoin did not put in a lower low. Instead, it reversed over here and then went to an all-time high. And anybody shorting this would have being completely wrecked. And what do you notice about the location where it reversed its trends and completely did a 180? It's the power loss support area. Now, this is not the only reason why a fractal or any other pattern can fail. Markets are inherently chaotic and want to move in the direction that is least expected to tap into the most liquidity possible. The most reliable patterns are the repeating long-term ones, and this is where Bitcoin's power law comes into play. When in doubt, always default to the simplest answer. And it doesn't get much simpler than the straight lines created by Bitcoin's power law and the periodic four-year cycles. So, will this mini-bubble pattern continue playing out by crashing more and retesting the blue line? Even though it's possible, it is absolutely not a certainty, Always have a backup plan ready for when your convictions turn out to be false. In Bitcoin's case, this could mean begrudgingly DCAing into it even when you think it could go lower. What matters the most is the long-term trends, and we know where that is going. If you would like to support our work, consider subscribing to our powerful Luxalgo indicators or check out our awesome designs by visiting our merch store. Also, make sure to join our free Telegram group. Your support really means a lot to us and allows us to continue producing more and better content in the future. This is Saverio speaking, and as always, thanks for watching.